Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of my Whipsnade Zoo recreation in Planet Zoo. Um, in the last episode we did this enclosure, the Waterfowl Lake. Um, so I gave a variety of different options last time for what I might go for this week and I think I've decided on the enclosure which sits over here next to the red pandas. So this is the Squirrel Monkey Island. Um, it's going to be a similar similar sort of style to the otters in a way. Um, so it's going to be a lot of the, the same kind of techniques. So the, the main difference is, is the Squirrel Monkey Island has where the fence is, the standoff fence for the public, there is some land, um, some actual grass before the moat starts. So. What that should mean is that I should be able to get a proper zoo path around the edges um, instead of having to use a fake path, hopefully. Um, so that will be quite good. Um, it is all all uh, lined ponds, uh, like a lined moat, not a, um, a natural moat. Um, so I'll probably do similar stuff to what I did with the otters and use the plaster pieces. Um, but the island is quite a lot bigger than the otter one. so. Uh, it's going to cover pretty much this this whole area that I flattened here, um, quite a big chunk like that. So um, yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be quite an interesting one. It's quite different to a lot of the stuff I've already done. Um, so similar to the otters in terms of the terrain and the moat and things, but uh, it's going to be some rope work, which is not really anything that I've done yet so far. Um, so that will be a nice one to try and do some perching and things like that for the animals to climb on. Um, and it's got a small house on the island as well, so that's going to be quite tricky because obviously squirrel monkeys being really small animals, the house is quite a small house. Um, so trying to get the detail and things in that will be a bit of a challenge, but uh, I'm sure we can make it work. And then. Uh, yeah, a lot of planting again, um, which we did a lot of in the last episode, so that won't be uh, too different. Uh, so yeah, this will be uh, this will be quite a nice build, and this is kind of the last one of these these smaller enclosures in this area. Um, so that will that will kind of finish that little portion off. Then it will just be sort of tidying up around the uh, the sort of in between parts. Uh, there is a lot of trees and things here, so. I've started this a little bit later than I would normally do, so I, uh, I'm not sure exactly how long it's going to take and how much time I'll have before the video comes out. So I, uh, I'll see what I can do in this, this fence line down here, uh, but yeah, the, uh, the main enclosure we should be able to get done alright. Uh, I'm probably going to put capuchin monkeys in this enclosure instead of the squirrel monkeys. Um, I was going to use red rough lemurs in its place, but because we've got ring-tailed lemurs that will come at a later stage, I thought we might as well use the capuchins uh, to, to get some use out of the, uh, the South American DLC animals, because uh, none of them are actually in Whipsnade um, of the new pack. So uh, this, yeah, this will be quite a nice, a nice opportunity to use them. So yeah, that is my plan. So I will, as always, put some pictures up for reference of what I'm doing, and then I'll be back when it's all finished. Right guys, I'm back, and I think I'm pretty much finished. Um, so, we'll start with the water, I think. So, as I said before, the the whole island is uh, enclosed with this concrete moat, um, the same as we had in the otters. So, this one was quite a challenge, uh, mostly because of how shallow it was and the angles of the sides. So you can kind of see that on the edges here, the uh, the actual terrain isn't flush with the top, which is quite annoying. But um, I, I don't think it looks too bad. Um, 
and it's it's not as bad on the inside for some reason or maybe it is actually um <laughs> but the uh yeah overall it's quite a shallow um quite a shallow one um much much shallower than the otters um obviously because this is more of a barrier rather than an actual uh water for something to swim in so um yeah it's uh it was quite quite tricky because of obviously the size of the actual island itself like you can see it's quite a big space so uh, yeah it took took a while to get that all lined up properly and to uh to make it make it all the angles right and uh the water level luckily lined up with how i needed it to be which is quite useful um because it did not do that with the hippos which was very annoying but uh yeah so moat wise that was all fairly straightforward just tricky to do um so the actual island itself um as you can see it's there's there's a few different elements to it which i i went over before so um one of the most difficult things was the uh the ropes so there's quite a lot of rope work and if you can see the best angle is probably over here so um there's this big central tree that has been felled so there's a couple of um big tree trunks there and then that is kind of a central point for a lot of the rope works uh, going to the surrounding trees and logs and bits um and then over on this side as well we've got a um quite a lot of uh rope work attaching to this this portion down here um i've used the kind of a mixture of the straight rope and the uh curved rope and a few of them are just sort of smaller rope pieces together and angled so that they look kind of bent. Um, and then the, uh, I think this is one of the, the most useful parts actually, the, um, in this, I think it's from the South American pack, the rope, the bamboo kind of rope attachment for fences and things, but uh, it's actually works really well in this for looking like the ropes tied around branches and things. So I've used loads of different bits just going all the way around that trunk um, and then for the actual branches themselves I've just used kind of the single pieces um, that are sort of angled around the, the branch themselves so I think that's turned out looking quite nice I think it looks quite quite realistic um, and then we've also got uh, some rope attached to the, the main tree in here as well um, so yeah lots of lots of different angles but i think that's kind of ended up nice and it's yeah it's kind of linked all the way around this central area there's bits of rope all around on the various trees and logs and things down there um we've got a little sand uh, bark pit sorry um which is one of the planters i think it's the new world planter um just sunken right into the ground so it looks like a little uh, a little sort of pit um, for them to play around in, hide food in and stuff. Um, a couple of like log uh, platformy things um, through here as well. And uh, yeah, just a lot of planting. I've tried to get the planting as accurate as I can, but um, it is tricky uh, with some of the stuff we have. It doesn't really work out, but I think in general, we've kind of, I try and go for like the size of plants um, and the shape of them and not as much the look of like colors and things like that but this one works quite well for the pampas grass the um the reeds and then a lot of like nettles and stuff different levels um one of the the cool bits is this tree here which is kind of on a weird angle um which actually is in real life it's a um it's really sort of leans right over towards the moat so i just put one of these trees in and leaned it right over um which works quite well um and then uh, the actual house itself. So this took a, quite a long time, actually, the house. Um, it's quite detailed. And obviously, as I said before, it's really small um, for really tiny animals. So I think it's turned out pretty well for how I wanted it to do and with what I was able to do with it, um, taking size into account. So um, the actual outside cage is actual mesh fencing, uh, barrier fencing. And then with some wooden slats sort of uh, at different intervals all the way around. Um, and then 
the roof is the lattice piece. Um, I decided not to try and make my own. I thought that that works well enough. Um, gives the right idea really. Um, and then the actual house is all just this, um, the thicker wood planks. Um, and for the windows, I couldn't really find the windows that would kind of fit. So what I've done is I've got glass, please did I do glass pieces? I can't actually remember now. Um, I know I didn't do glass pieces. I did gray color cubes. That is what I did. Um, and I feel like they kind of give the impression of glass really, um, instead of actually using the glass pieces because they kind of overlap if you uh, put one on top of the other and they give a weird pattern and I don't think it looks right. So I've just kind of got these grayed out windows, but I think they, they do look like windows, which is good. Um, there's a couple of little shelves and things leading to the logs and the shelf that goes all the way around. Um, and then I've made these little custom hatches, little um, slides for the animals to come out of. So there's one on that side and then I've got one up here. Um, and then I've got a door and just a random little, I made a little door there and a slide for outside here. And then uh, if we go inside here, um, there's a slide in there. And then I've just put a few little rope worky bits. It's hard to see because there's a lot of planting. Um, yeah, a few little ropes. Um, some of the African, I can't remember what they're called. These these sort of curly looking sticks. Um, and just some, some of the sort of log chunks, which is something that we've used before, just like slices of logs um, to put food on, things like that. And then a little bit of planting inside um, just to make it a bit less sort of open um, and then a little bit of planting in front and I think yeah I think that's turned out quite quite well it's not exactly accurate but I think for what I'm able to do with the pieces I've got it's not too bad um, so yeah I'm quite happy with that um, I might actually upload this on the workshop as well um, if anyone is interested because um, it's obviously it doesn't work so there's no actual access for the animals it's all enclosed it's all kind of fake um like the otter island was uh but yeah it's i think if you kind of wanted to put something in that looked realistic for a smaller monkey then this is pretty realistic because it's based off a real thing um i've also done all this rope work stuff i've basically made everything that all the ropes are connected to into a group so um i've I think I'll probably actually put that on the workshop as well because um, I think it's I think it's quite a nice piece having all the different ropes so it's kind of all the logs and sticks that are attached all the actual ropes themselves and the connecting parts uh, and yeah all like the big tree and everything um, so yeah all, all the stuff that's connected um, where it connects to that you could just put another tree or something in there if you wanted to or if I put the house on as well, you could have them both in there. Um, so yeah, that is the uh, that is pretty much all the island stuff. Um, I did do a little bit of planting just around the sides here because there's just a few trees that line that side. Um, and then there is a bit of planting around the public side. There's one big tree there um, and then a few sort of bushes and bits around this side. Um, but yeah, not too much. Obviously, it's hard to tell when, if you're not zoomed right in, but a lot there's a bit of long grass and stuff in here. Um, but I've left a few kind of pathways and things. Um, and then you can see I did put the capuchins in here. Uh, and they, I think they look quite nice in there, actually. They work quite well. Um, and they can't escape, which is good, because I did think they might be able to escape. Um, especially I'll, sh I'll show now the um the bridge that i made for the keeper access yeah i thought they might be able to but yeah it's all fully contained but there was one big issue that i had um which was the actual boundary for the habitat because i couldn't put the gate anywhere along this actual fence so all this is a custom fence just the kind of standard fence that we've seen so far in the zoo a lot 
um, just kind of a plain wooden fence. Uh, but yeah, I uh, I couldn't put the fence anywhere along here because of the water. So I've had to kind of do it a weird way. You can probably see sneaking outside there. That is where the habitat gate is, which is really annoying, but I've just tried to hide it behind a tree, which I don't think, I mean, it could be worse because the way I had it before, the the distance that the gate would have to be from this water here was like literally over here. Um, and I, I didn't want, I thought I could probably get away with making this, um, this grassy area a little bit wider if I had to, but to make it sort of as wide as up to the other side of this path would just be rubbish. So um, yeah, I've, uh, I've got the habitat gate there um, and that's the only bit that's exposed. Everything else is null. Um, and the, uh, if I show the actual habitat there, so it just crosses the path because guests can go into captured enclosures, it says on the Zoopedia. So, um, yeah, in theory, if a guest walks across there, there shouldn't be an issue as far as I know. Uh, not that I've guessed in here anyway, as I've said before, um, while I'm building it all, but, uh, yeah, that is, that is the way that the habitat actually works. And I think that's the best, the best I'm gonna get really from it. Because, yeah, as I said, I just think any other way, it just would look stupid. So even though it does look a bit silly to have a random door behind a tree, I don't think from the angles you're gonna get, you know, from this side, you're not really gonna see it too much with the trees in the way. And in theory, you should be looking this way. Uh, and then, yeah, from the other side, it's kind of hidden as well. So yeah, I don't think it's too bad. Um, so yeah, this is the little bridge. Um, I don't, I haven't actually sort of played, like unpaused the game much um, to see what the keepers do, but I think I did see the keepers place food over here, but I didn't actually see them walk on there. So I don't know if they just kind of walk over, over to this area and then the food just appears there, but either way um if the animals can't get off and food can be placed on there then that's all that matters really um the only issue with having that there that gate there is that obviously if any animal needs to come out if it's sick or anything happens to it when it's placed back in the enclosure it appears here on this grass so i had to quickly move them all back in uh to the actual island and then they can't escape so that's how I've managed to do it. But yeah, anyway, this bridge, I just used like this, um, this great piece, I can't remember what it's called, one of the new world pieces, I think, um, to make the actual bridge and this little gate on the middle. And then there's electric fence on the sides and a little sort of concrete rampy part going up to it. It didn't used to be like this. There used to just be a walkway underneath the water. So if you could walk over it in wellies, but the, uh, the animals, themselves wouldn't go into it because it was water to them so uh, yeah now it's now it's been upgraded to a nice fancy bridge so I've included that in there um, and I think that's pretty much it um, yeah I, th I think it's turned out pretty well um, the road work took a long time but I think I'm quite happy with the result really um, I don't think I could have done it much better than that it was just really awkward getting the angles but um yeah i'm i'm pretty happy with it so um yeah that is the the capuchin slash squirrel monkey island um the the actual path itself this is i've extended the red panda fake path out to this bit because the ditch from the red panda sort of ends here and i couldn't get a path through there so um, there's a real path that runs all the way around the edge of that way, but this little bit is not connected. Um, and I did realize that I hadn't changed the color of the plaster on this path. So it looked really stupid um, and stood out loads. Um, but now I've, I've done it to the same kind of color as the main path, so it blends in a bit better. So um, yeah, that is that kind of portion finished. When I've sorted out the area behind the squirrel monkeys, I'll get rid of this um, path and the buildings here obviously and that path won't be there it will just be a circle around there um, that was me testing the um, how close 
gates could be to water um, and it did not work out for me as you can tell but um, it's always good to just go off to an unused bit and do a little bit of experimenting trying to find out what's going to work properly um, so yeah that is that is that building done um, I don't think there's anything else I need to change to it really um, it would just be there's a bit of landscaping sort of on that side uh, which I will do when I've kind of sorted out all the bits over here uh, and then this whole chunk here let me zoom out a bit yeah that whole chunk there is a kind of event space um, so there's a big marquee and a couple of um, other small kind of more temporary looking buildings or wooden buildings um, things like that a bit of planting and stuff so that will be uh, another little project another little area to do um, and then yeah once I've kind of done that part I'll blend all these bits in together and make them how they should be um, so yeah that is it for this one um, as I say every week I don't know what I'm going to do next time um, I keep looking over here thinking I should do this but um, I don't know part of me thinks maybe going back over this way towards the uh, hippo area because um, there's still a, a big chunk here that needs to be done uh, so yeah potentially the, the tricky thing with all this stuff is that it's all quite connected and the actual terrain itself is going to be like what if I try and do one part it's going to have a big impact on all the rest so I almost need to do the whole lot in one go so that I've got all the right landscaping but that's going to be quite a big big task to do so it's quite daunting so I might just turn away from that one and look at something else actually um, uh, we have got like I said in the last one the cafe so that might be a potential bit for next time um, I also do need to start thinking about uh, a bit more of the layout really um, because even though I've I've still got all these bits laid out um, there's all of all of this whole area around here is not even been laid out so yeah, I, uh, I will get onto that at some point. I don't know whether I'll do an actual episode focused on that and kind of show how how I do it, if anyone would be interested in that, um, or I'll just do it all off camera and um, and then come back with a, another episode focused on one of these bits at some point. But um, yeah, for now, I'm not too sure but I will decide fairly quickly and get started on it. Um, so if you have any comments, please leave them below. Um, if you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see future videos. Um, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.